Pull up. Frank. Headshot. Frank. Sit down. Frank. Stand up. Frank. Pass out. Frank. Wake up. Frank. Fade it. Frank. Fade it. Now I done grew up around some people living their life. That was really about me moving on with my life, moving on from the past. You know, everybody knows Kendrick Lamar for you know who I am now. You know, and they feel I have a whole bunch of insight. But in order to gain that insight, I had to come from this place. You know, this, this, this place of, of loneliness, darkness, um, evil. Nobody knows that. Now I done grew up around some people living their life in bottles. Granddaddy had the golden flash, backstroke every day in Chicago. Some people like the way it feels. Some and now all the questions that was been asked in interviews, you will know now. You will know the reason why I don't smoke. You know the reason why I'm not that much of a drinker. Everything is put into this album. If you go back to my early stages where the internet world, you know, recognized me, I've been screaming out Good Kid, Mad City since my earliest mixtapes. I've been holding on to the album cover, you know, for years. Everything's been premeditated, and um, what I think happened is, you know, me visualizing that for so long, throwing that in the universe, it finally comes into play, you know. So I'm definitely, I'm definitely aware, you know, I've been anticipating it and grooming it for years now. I think when people hear the album and they really listen to what he's saying, they'll understand that this dude's a really a different type of artist, you know what I mean? He's a different type of person. He's just one of those kids that was exposed to all of Compton, you know what I mean? Like all of the, you know, the different sides, you know, a lot of, you know, different sides of the fence. You might have homies that are Crips, and you might have homies that are Bloods, homies that are Essays. He's telling that story of how, you know, a kid, you know, maybe that once peace could wiggle out of that situation. Seem like the whole city go against me. Every time I'm in the street, I hear yuck, yuck, yuck. He's a great storyteller, man. Like he paint that picture, he put it's like a movie. It's like it's like a real live movie. It's like you you paying your money to go to the AMC theaters, and you know what I mean. But it's music, it's music. But you really like you listening, but you watching at the same time. You can just really close your eyes, zone out, and see everything he's talking about. He puts you in their shoes, and you can feel it. Like you know what I mean. It's like it's amazing, man. I can't wait till y'all hear that record, man. I mean, man. Why you baby sitting only two or three shots? I'ma show you how to turn it up a notch. First you get a swimming pool. Me and Kendra go back, man, since the beginning of 10th grade. I was like the local DJ at my school and I used to have these rap battles during like lunch. And my boy Antonio, he was like one of the best rappers at the school. And he was telling me that he had a friend that went to Centennial that was the craziest. I was intrigued. I told him, you know, bring him through. I set up like a makeshift studio in my house. Back in the time it was like all the rappers were talking about drug dealing, like the clips were hot, and, and it was just all about drug dealing at that time, the rap was at least. And I remember he had this line, he was like, um, I ship keys like a piano, like a grand piano or something like that. And I just thought that was the most amazing line for somebody his age. And I remember that was the line that made me be like, damn, let me, let me explore this a little bit more. We had a little sock over the, uh, over the microphone, did a bunch of freestyles over that little mic. Gave it to his brother that was producing at the time, and um, built a, a some more than just you know people working together. Built a friendship, built built a brotherhood over the years, and that's been about eight years, almost a decade now. We looked at Top Dog as you know the closest person to the industry. He was the one that had you know at least a shoestring in the door. We put out this mixtape when I was 16, and um, Dave was trying to shop it to him. And Top Dog he'd always be like, I'm gonna listen to it, I'm gonna listen to it, so. They found out his little antics to have him play it in his ear, and uh, finally we had a meeting with him. It's been history since. I tried everything to get around this dude. Like, I remember one time I, uh, I posed like I could fix his computer, because he said the computer needs to be fixed. And the whole time I was playing the music and just taking apart his computer, he started paying more attention to me, and I, I came over and joined the company, brought Kendrick in, and we just started grinding from there. He already had J-Rock around that time period, so it was kind of like I was bringing the talent, and he had the talent, so we, it's coming up at the same time. Top Dog heard some uh, a record I did with one of my homeboys. That I think that changed my life forever when he took me up off the streets, put me in the studio, like, man, this is what you need to be doing. Kendrick came through. I remember we was doing this record, the first record we ever did. And uh, I was struggling to write my verse. I'm writing on a piece of paper and stuff. I'm writing on paper. And I'm, you know what I mean? I'm trying to hurry up and finish my verse before him. But all the time, he already finished his verse. I'm like, oh, where your paper at? I'm like, you ain't writing on He said, nah, he said, I write in my head. That moment right there, I was like, wow, this dude is something else. My first memories of J-Rock when I came in the studio, 
He was sitting in the corner, and um, music had came on, instrumental started playing. And I don't think it was a finished song, and his voice came on. And I was just remembering, like, man, how strong this guy's voice was over this track. J Rock ain't no super big dude, <laughs> you know what I mean? Skinny cat out of Watts. And then when his voice came on this mic, I was like, well, it immediately, you know, intimidates you. It's crazy because his baritone is naturally like that. That was one of the first memories. I seen it all. Loyalty, betrayal, envy. My close homie died in my arms. Absol came around. The first thing I remember about Absol, he had these glasses on, these nerdy glasses and his slick hair. So me and Top Dog immediately just started just bagging on him, just roasting. If you step in the studio with him for the first time, it's a real uh, intimidating experience, you know what I'm saying? He's real confident, he's real focused. If you go in there with your chest out and all of that, you know what I'm saying? He might, might poke it in a little bit. First time I stepped foot in uh, TDE Studios, J-Rock and K-Dot, they were working on the record. When I think back, you know what I mean? I just felt like he was glowing, you know what I mean? I felt like he thought he was the best. You know, he didn't even have to say it. I just felt the energy, you know what I'm saying? And you know, me thinking that I'm, a, I'm the best, you know, it was a real humbling experience, you know what I mean? We had fun and we joked around in the studio. And then he hopped in a booth. <laughs> it was a whole nother story. Babylon, Babylon. At my window, all I see is Babylon. On the news, all I see It was like this person releasing this energy, you know, that he, he locks inside himself, you know, for so long. And this character that he, he brings out on the mic. You know, and it was, it was crazy. His wordplay was crazy, his storytelling. And you tell he's a real student of the game, you know, and that was something that I was doing at the time, you know, going back and forth and listening to people. You know, these older cats that inspired us, he was doing the same thing. Black Hippie. Black Hippie came about later on when Q came along. Q represents South Central LA. J-Rock represents Watts. I represent Carson, California and uh, Kendrick represents Compton, California, and we're all neighbors, but it's all different environments, different different lifestyles, you know what I mean? Different dialects. I definitely embody, you know, a lot of LA energy. I mean, it's a culture, you know, it's a part of me, it's what I represent, and you hear it in my music. I'm talking for, you know, not only myself, but people in, you know, this LA County, in California, that don't have, you know, the vocals to hop on the mic or the courage to hop on the mic and spread it to the world, you know, so I get a lot of that energy from LA. K Dot, the nickname, that been acquired since I was a kid, just being in the neighborhood. You know, something given to me by just my homeboys growing up in Compton. So that name I always be there. You know, I go back to the city now, they don't, they don't call me Kendrick. I just felt like it was, a, it was a time for me to grow, you know, not only as an artist, but as a person. I want the, you know, the world to know me for who I am. And um, I just sat back and reflect on why Tupac you know, is one of the greatest, why Big's one of the greatest, why Jay is. Because the people felt like they had a connection. It wasn't just a, a facade that you've seen on stage or on, you know, on TV. People actually felt like you know, there was a part you know, of what you was going through and, and you know, your worries. And, just life in general, you know, I said, you know, what, what better way to start that rather than, you know, giving them my real name, letting them know who I am as a person. My songs are personal, I do try to make them universal. It took me a long time to figure that out, you know, and I stay just in that one box, because now I know the world is listening. Why you babysitting only two or three shots? I'm gonna show you how to turn it up a notch. First you get a swimming pool full of liquor, then you die. Swimming pool is definitely a true experience. You grow up in, in this household and you see everybody's drinking and not drinking casually, but actually, you know, getting drunk majority of the time. And then you find yourself doing the same thing, you know, as a teenager, indulging in that and everybody else influenced by it. And um, as I grew as a person, you know, I had to make the choice and I found out what was right and what was wrong. I could either be a casual drinker or I could be a drunk. And that's what that song is basically about. The art of peer pressure is, you know, that that's, man, that's just my life, man. Even the characters involved, you know, I can relate to that on so many levels, even all of the references that, we, that he was using. I got the blood in my mouth. Usually I'm drug free, but shit, I'm with the homies. I'm sure everybody can relate, you know, to a specific time in their lives where, you know, there were a group of guys and, and you're influenced by these cats because you grew up with them and you, you know you respect them 
And um, most of the times, your doings, you know, it'd be wrong doings, and you know it. You know at the end of the day. But at the same time, you're comfortable with them, and you know, you have that bond and that brotherhood. And um, that's the art of peer pressure. Dreams that live in life like rappers do. Like rappers do. Like rappers. Back when condom rappers wasn't cool. They wasn't. I have some of my most intricate lines in this album, and I have some of my most, you know, straightforward. One of my favorite tracks is, is, is Money Trees. Say, um, dreams of living life like rappers do. But for now, I guess the sack could do. Lines like that, simple lines like that, I think it connect, you know, even more because everybody can relate to it. It's not too, too much around it. Hey, Dre, what's happening with it, my nigga? Still a matted peel the plastic off it, you can feel the magic. Still the day that I met Dre, I wrote the lyrics. I just happened to fall in the studio. Well, I just blaze in there and he's playing this this crazy monstrous beat, you know, Dre, you know, around it, and um, I immediately got inspired, I just started writing, started writing, and um, that was actually the first studio session that I had with Dre. That is the last song on the album for a specific reason, that's the first song I did with Dre, that was the start of my new life. As a kid, you always say, you know, you want this lifestyle, you want this lifestyle, you know, and then you get it, and then you see how, you know, detrimental it can be for you. One thing I learned, you know, when you in, you in the limelight, anything, you know, that you have a, a vice for, you know, it's at your demand times 10, and it can kill you, you know? So, me facing that, you know, I always tend to put that in my music, because that's everyday life in general. I'm trying to keep it alive and I compromise the feeling we love. You're trying to keep it deprived and only co sign with radio does. People get on the mic, they're not personal anymore. They don't, they'll tell you everything they're doing right, but they won't tell you anything they're doing wrong. And I, that's where the connection, you lose your connection with, you know, a lot of different artists. With him, is he, he gains that connection because he's willing to share something that the average person would, you know, be embarrassed about. His honesty is a, is a big asset, man. He's just keeping it, keeping it real, you know what I mean? A lot of rappers out there just rap, you know what I mean? But his honest, he, he honest about what he's talking about. I think that's what the people really feel, you know what I mean? If you can see it at the shows, if you go to any one of his shows, man, the shows is crazy, you know what I mean? And, and it's the honesty, man, and the records, you feel me? Being a fan, one, and, you know, him being a very good friend of mine it's just kind of like like a time of reckoning like you know it's finally happening right now i see the potential to take over the whole game be the biggest artist in the game be the biggest artist in hip-hop history i see that potential so that's good enough for me okay now open your mind up and listen me kendrick i'm in your conscience if you do not hear me then you will be history kendrick. this album is definitely um a growth you know process as far as me as a person you know, being able to vent and, and get these type of emotions out and reflect on certain things that I didn't want to talk about early on when people was listening to Kendrick Lamar. It's definitely a process, you know, you know, for me to grow and understand how far I came. Why you baby sitting only two or three shots? I'ma show you how to turn it up 